Answer without using a calculator. If Donna maintains an average speed of 60 miles per hour, how many minutes will it take her to drive 100 miles? So now's your chance if you'd like to, to try to pause the video and try to figure this question out. And again, uh, let's have you try to do this without using a calculator just to get some practice with that. And if you'd like to, you can pause the video, try to work this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so th this question here has several different ways that you could look at it. Um, the way I'm going to show you here, I'm going to start with the fact that uh, we're asked how many minutes will it take her to drive 100 miles. So I'm going to start by jotting down the 100 miles here. So I'm going to just put an M for miles. Now, one really, really important thing to note here is that we have a mismatch with our units, right? So here we're told 60 miles per hour, but we're asked how many minutes will it take her to drive 100 miles? And all of the answers are in minutes here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this 60 miles per hour and I'm going to set it up where I'm going to make a fraction and I'm going to take the 60 miles and I'm going to put the 60 miles down here in the bottom of the fraction. And you might be wondering, well, why would you put 60 miles in the bottom of the fraction? Well, because up here we have 100 miles. So if we do miles divided by miles, the miles are going to cancel out, which is going to help us get the answer in minutes. Now, we're told 60 miles per hour, so the easy thing to do here would just be to write one hour here. And you can definitely work through the problem if you put one hour up here. But actually, it's going to be faster, I think, if we just write 60 minutes up here. Okay, so one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So if ever you need to go from minutes to hours, and like you're told 60 miles per hour, you can just simply write 60 minutes here instead of one hour, because 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So now what we're going to do is we just have to do a little bit of math here. And uh, what makes it nice if you set the problem up this way is that the miles will cancel out, which is what we want. And actually, since you've got 60 divided by 60, that's also going to cancel out. So we're just going to be left with 100 minutes. OK, so that's a really uh, kind of a speed run way to get the answer here to this question. Um, but in order to do that, you would have had to put in uh, 60 minutes here instead of one hour. So if you just did one hour up here and you didn't write it out like you didn't convert to minutes first, that's fine. Let me show you the written solution that would kind of show you how to work through the question if you did it that way. And if you have another way completely to do this question, just let me know down below because there's, in math, there's usually more than one way to look at things. But if you want, you could pause the video and study the solution. And if not, that's fine too. We'll keep moving along. This video's champion shout out goes to a test taker who says, I was able to pass my test with 181 at the beginning of the month. I mostly only studied with a prep book and YouTube videos like these. A 181 is a really, really high score and I want to wish this person a huge congratulations on the accomplishment. What's the measure of the missing angle of the trapezoid? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So now's your chance if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so a trapezoid is a four-sided plane figure, and for any four-sided plane figure, the internal angles are always going to add up to 360 degrees. So basically, what we can do here is take all the angles, and we can write an equation. So we've got 105, we've got 75, we've got 72. And we've got this one angle here, and we don't know what this angle is, so I'm just going to call it x. And we can set this all equal to 360. So again, for four-sided plane figures like trapezoids, uh, all of the internal angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. So that's why we wrote this equation out here. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 105 plus 75 plus 72 and I get 252. So we can actually make this a little bit simpler. So 252 plus x equals 360. Now to get the x, all we have to do is do 360 minus 252. And when we do that, we see that the answer is x equals 108. So I'm going to put the notes for this question that I typed out here up on the screen for you. Take all the time you need with studying this. Maybe jot something down in your notes if you'd like to. And if not, that's fine, too. We'll move right ahead whenever you're ready.
Terry bought seven apples and twelve oranges for thirteen ninety seven total, while his sister bought twenty oranges for seventeen eighty total. What is the price of just one apple and what is the price of just one orange? So now is your chance if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so there's actually two equations that we can write, and one of them just comes from the first piece of information we have here. So we can say that 7a for 7 apples plus 12 oranges equals 13.97. Now, instead of writing an O for oranges, I'm going to put an R, and let me show you why that is. So if I write 12 O, where this O stands for oranges, I might forget that this is 12 O and think this is 120. So I'm actually going to put R for oranges. I know that obviously orange starts with O, but I'm just going to put an R here for orange so that we don't think this is 120, because that's definitely a mistake I would make. So we have 7A plus 12 R equals 13... 0.97. So this is the first equation we can write. Now the second piece of information, 20 oranges for 1780 total, what we can do is we can write 20 R, and again the R is for oranges here, 20 R equals 17.8. So the reason we're doing this is because we know that Terry bought seven apples, but we don't know what the price of each apple is, so we just put an A here. And we know that he bought 12 oranges, uh, but we don't know how many, or we don't know what the price of each orange is, so I'm just going to put R here. All right, same with this down here. So we know that his sister bought 20 oranges for 17.8. So we know the number of oranges was 20, but we don't know the price per orange, so that's just why we're putting R here. So basically what I want to do here is solve this equation for R. And if you're wondering what exactly does that mean, basically we want to do some math and we want to get the r by itself. So since we have 20 r, that is really 20 times r. So we want to do the opposite of times, which is divide. So if I do 20 divided by 20, the 20s will cancel out. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So I'm going to do 17.8 divided by 20. Okay, so let me rewrite here. And if I do 17.8 divided by 20 in my calculator, I get 0.89. So we know that the price of one orange equals 0.89 or 89 cents. So you say, well, what does that tell us? Well, that can help us get the price for each apple. Because what I'm going to do is come back to this first equation, the 7a plus 12r, and I'm going to take this 0.89 and I'm going to substitute it into this equation for r. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, let me show you. So I'm going to rewrite this, and instead of writing R this time, I'm going to put 0.89. So I'm going to do 7a plus 12 times 0.89. Okay, and this equals 13.97. So now we have 12 times 0.89. So let me do the math here and let me rewrite it again. And obviously when you're doing this, you don't have to write out every single step like this. I'm just doing this for instructional purposes. But in my calculator, if I do 12 times 0.89, I get 10.68. So 10.68. And this is equal to 13.97. So the goal here is we want to get the A by itself. And once we do that, that's going to tell us the price of just one apple. So what I want to do now is I want to subtract 10.68 from both sides. Okay, so when I do that, that's going to get me one step closer to finding the answer. So in my calculator, what I see is that if I do 13.97 minus 10.68, I get 3... I don't know why there's a little dot here. I don't remember writing that, but I'll have 3.29. So I have 3.9, or sorry, 3.29. So I now have 7a equals 3.29. So the scenario now is that we want to divide by 7 on both sides. So when I divide by 7 on both sides, that's going to tell me what a equals. So if I do that, I see that a equals 0.47. So after all is said and done, we know that the price of one orange is 0.89, and 
And we also know that the price of one apple is 0.47 or 47 cents. So the correct answer here is C. Now, so here's the written solution. As always, you can pause the video and study it if you'd like to, and if not, that's fine too, but I'll leave this up on the screen for you here.